All right, another optimization problem. Take a moment and read the example. So the first thing we need to do, as always, is determine what it is we are trying to optimize or maximize or minimize. And in the last sentence, it says, what is the largest volume bag of this shape? Well, we're given that it has a length and a width and a height. So we have to assume that what we have here is uh, some type of a rectangular solid. So we have um, something that's going to look like that. Just drawing a little quick sketch. And so this is the height. This let's call the width. And this will be the length. And we want to maximize that. We want the largest volume. Well, the volume of an object of this shape can be calculated by multiplying the length times the width times the height. So this is our objective function. That is the first step. Always determine what you are trying to optimize. The problem with this, of course, is we have more than one independent variable. In fact, in this problem, we have three. Length, width, and height are all different variables. So when we have two independent variables, we have to come up with a constraint. When we have three independent variables, we have to come up with two constraints. We need two constraints because we need to replace two of these variables. So going back to the problem, we have to read it carefully to determine what we could use for constraints. And the first constraint would be that the length plus the width plus the height of the checked bag cannot exceed. And again, for this for sake of this problem, we're not going to use an inequality. Uh, it would have to be less than or equal to. We're just going to say it's going to be equal to 480. So that is one constraint. So the length plus the width plus the height is equal to 480. And we still need one more constraint. Well, the other one is the bag whose height is twice the width. The height is twice the width. So the height is equal to two times W. And there is another constraint. So what do we do with these constraints? Well, we need to substitute them into the objective function. And the first thing we would want to try to do is to substitute um, uh, 2w into the first constraint. We're just going to work with these two constraints right here. And I'm going to substitute 2w, let me highlight that, 2w in for h. And so what I'm going to then have is I'm going to have L plus W, and then H is equal to 2W, and that's equal to 480, or L plus 3W equals 480. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve that for L. So L is 480 minus 3w. And so what I can do now is I can substitute this in for L up here. I can also substitute um, 2w in for 2w in for h. So when I do that, it's going to look something like this. We're going to have volume is equal to the length. Well, the length now is 480 minus 3w times the width and times the height, which is 2w. And so notice that we are now down to one independent variable. All we have to do is multiply all this together. And so when we multiply this through, we have um, 
2w times w is 2w squared. I'll do this in a couple steps. 2w squared times 480 minus 3w. And so then volume is equal to 480 times 2 is 960w squared minus 6w cubed. And there is my, my objective function with all of the constraints substituted in, ready to go to work. All right, so we've done step one, find the objective function. We did step two, find the constraints. Step three, we substituted the constraints into the objective function. We are now ready for step four, our favorite step, which is where we have the calculus. And so we have the volume in terms of one independent variable, w, and we want to find the derivative of that. So 2 times 960 is 1920 w minus 18 w squared. And of course, we're going to set that equal to 0. And let's see, I can factor a w out of this. And we'll have 1920 minus 18w equals 0. And setting both of those factors equal to 0, zero we have w equals 0. 1920 minus 18w equals 0. Or 1920 equals 18w. Or w is going to be approximately uh, when you divide 1920 by 18, 106.67 to two decimal places, or approximately 106.7. Now, what do we do with this w equals zero? Well, that wouldn't make any sense. <clears throat> if the width was zero, we don't have a bag. So we can disregard that. So the only realistic answer is that the width is 106 0.7. Well, now we can find the height. The height uh, is equal to two times the width. And so the height is two times 106.7. So the height then is going to be approximately 213.3. And now we have the height. Lastly, the length. Well, the length, we use the equation 400, the constraint 480 minus 3w. And so again, substituting in, we have 480 minus 3 times 106.7. And so the length is going to be approximately uh, 159.99 or approximately 160. And there's my length. Now, this might be a very, very large bag. <laughs> okay. Uh, so just disregarding the fact that this seems like a really, really big bag, um, we want to find the volume of the bag finally. And so the volume is the length times the width times the height. So that is the 160 times the 213, I think it was, 213.3 times uh, 106.7. And so the volume is going to be approximately um, 3 comma 612, 480 cubic centimeters, I believe this was in, cubic centimeters. Very large bag, over 3 million cubic centimeters. All right, and so that is another optimization problem.